Yo, good morning, family. How you doing? This is your brother, Bob Mendes. Peace to you. Peace to your home. Peace to your family. Peace to your community. Peace to your ancestry. Peace to my community. Peace to my ancestry. Peace to the nation that you, I, and they are creating. Peace also to the God of forces, to the great spirit above, to the mother earth below. How y'all doing? Um, there's been this message that's been kind of on me for a little bit of time. And, uh, you know, they say no time is like the presence of let me talk about this now, because I think as we are moving as black folks, uh, as we are moving into the Thanksgiving, the holiday season, and then into the new year, uh, both new years, both new years, you know, we have the calendar new year, and then we have the astrological new year, which is in uh, about four months, that's in March. <clears throat> and so as we are moving, shifting that way, um, there's, there's something that I really think we need to start thinking about as black folks. Um, I was listening to uh, a brother on YouTube, and he made a very, very, very good statement that I think uh, is insightful enough for all of us to utilize. The statement is, if I can say it correctly... <clears throat> <clears throat> that uh, smart people talk about events. Uh, intelligent people talk about ideas. And ignorant people talk about people. I think it's, what, it's how it went. Um, well, it just got me thinking. Because uh, I, I think there's some very big truth to that, particularly with the idea of... Um, Smart people talking about events, intelligent people talking about ideas. Ideas are very important. In fact, um, capitalists at a very uh, early time period in uh, uh, the late 1800s actually talked about ideas. They wanted to control ideas. They were they were terrified of ideas, of free exchange of ideas, because they... They didn't say this, but I think it was pretty evident that uh, they knew they couldn't win. Um, capitalism uh, is not a natural fit for humanity. It is a distortion of, of humanity, it is a distortion of human interests. And therefore, uh, it couldn't win an ideas argument, so it had to control ideas. And that's what we, we are now living in, because if it actually had to explain itself with something that was more natural to humanity, humanity wouldn't pick it for a moment. Um, but it benefits a very select small group of people. And as I've said to many people um, in discussing it and, and trying to explain to them why it is ultimately doomed and why it will ultimately either crash or it will take the planet down and the planet will crash because the planet won't stand with it, um, uh, is that it is from a standpoint of uh, looking at capitalism as a corporate structure, which is what it is, you know, you can tell what a, what a, what a system is by the smallest concept, because um, it's macro and micro are joined. So the macro is ultimately in the micro and the micro is in the macro. So at its smallest, um, uh, level, uh, its seed is corporations. And in a corporation, uh, a corporation is not uh, a democracy. And they make no bones about that. But it also turns reality on its head. What do I mean? I mean that in a corporation, you are considered a majority stakeholder. If you have more, if you own more stock than any one other individual, again, you are considered a majority stakeholder if you own more stock as an individual than any other one individual. Meaning out of 100% of stock ownership, if you own 12%, 9%, 8%, 7%, 5%, 
and no other person owns one person. Now that person, <clears throat> you do have to count, um, <clears throat> excuse me, you do have to count uh, organizations uh, like hedge funds and things like that. Those are considered people when you're in these equations. But if no other one person, no other one organization owns more stock than you, then you are considered a majority stockholder. Now that turns on its head what the term, what the phrase majority actually means. A majority is a majority. It's supposed to mean who owns the most. So if you own 5%, no other one person owns 5%, owns more than 5%, you can control that company. Now, if let's say 40% of the other stock owners get together and they want to oppose you, they technically have no power to oppose you. Now, you know, we can talk about voting on the uh, on the on the board and if the board goes with it and things like that. But they can't oppose you. Forty percent cannot oppose five percent if that one person owns more than one uh, owns more than one individual in that 40 percent. There's going to be a battle with it, but it's still it's still what it is. It is still what it is. Now, they, now, people try to say, oh, well, mechanisms are put in place, so, you know, it's not really like that. No, it is exactly like that. It is exactly like that. Capitalism is, is on its face, a farce. It allows the minority, it allows the minority to control the majority. It takes the power of the majority away and gives it to the minority and propels the minority as the majority. Now you understand why the world is the way it is. We as black folks, we need to understand this. But there's something else that we need to understand because we don't have very good political education. And while, yes, I like metaphysics, while, yes, I like black spiritualism, while, yes, I like comedic learning, yes, I like all those things. As I've said before, you ain't feeding people with that stuff. You're not feeding people with that stuff. We can talk about the world coming to an end and all this other stuff, but here's the thing. That's going to be a very hard bridge to cross when it happens. And from my own personal perspective, that ain't why I came here. I ain't here to just see the world end. I know there's a lot of nihilists who want it to just because they're nihilists. They want things to die. But... That's not why the majority of people like me came to this planet. And yeah, I just said that. If you don't know, go and watch the, the video that I did on reincarnation. But that ain't why we're here. So we have to get smart. We have to understand what time it is. Because we as black people, we are being called on to kind of lift this planet up. The, the Hopi believe that before any great cataclysm, um, the great spirit tries to wake us all up sometimes by sending a messenger. I kind of get the feeling that, um, uh, this time the great spirit hedged a bet and said, we're just going to send a freaking bunch of you. So come on, <laughs> let's see if you wake up now. Um, uh, and I think I'll be proven by that. Wait, you know, watch, watch, see what happens over the next five years. Actually don't watch, get active, get moving on this stuff. But um, we as black folks, we are being called to play a very important role in this, and we have to now be ready for it. So look at, uh, I don't know if you all have it. I do. Um, Neely Fuller gave us a really good um, blueprint. There are nine areas of people activity, which we all need to be familiar um, of, and we need to reach. I was going to say reach out and uh, but now that's the, those are the wrong words. We need to uh, familiarize ourselves with those nine areas. I had 10. I had a, a tenth one um, and and I was remind I was not reminded, but I was introduced to this tenth one by um, uh, Baba Hiawatha. Kabane, I believe is his name, um, who added nutrition to his list. And I think it's correct. I think we need to be um, looking at nutrition overwhelmingly, 
overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly. Um, so we need to be familiar with these things, and we need to read up on all on these ten, and we need to construct our thinking along those ten, and then construct our world along those ten. Um, I think that that's what we need to do, and that's really what the ancestors have been on me about lately, because uh, we don't have much time, you know. Uh, I don't necessarily believe the reports about it being 10 years before all hell breaks loose, but at the same time, I do believe that. I, that, um, um, I believe we're close. I do believe we're close, and um, I don't believe it because they haven't been correct on any timetable. But I do believe we're close. Meaning what? Oh, excuse me. Um, I believe that, you know, within the next 12 years. I don't, uh, you know, I don't believe it's going to be 20 or 25. I do believe it's going to be within the next 12 years. And we need to be ready for that. I think, for one, as black people on, on this continent, we are the most unprepared people for a major catastrophe, and we need to change that. We are the most unprepared people of a major catastrophe. We are not ready for major catastrophes. And that means to the churches, you're gonna have to start actually doing some work. And it ain't about Jesus. To hell with Jesus. I don't give a damn about Jesus. Jesus ain't gonna do nothing. Now I know, that hurts a lot of y'all. I understand it hurts a lot of you, but I, it's not about protecting your feelings we need to be building our communities up. And Jesus ain't getting us there. Muhammad ain't getting us there. These are nice principles, but you take the principles, leave the baby that ain't giving you nothing. Because that's what the reason why you're having a hard time with both Islam and Christianity and attracting younger people and attracting younger people is because there's no real fire to it. And they can feel that. You think it's the young people that are letting you down. No, you don't want letting the young people down. Afrocentrism tried giving all of you the spark that was going to be necessary to go on to the next level and to go on to the next generation. And very few of you took it. And very, very few of you took it because you were too good for it. You were too good for it. Well, now you have a generation that needs that spark, needs that fire, and none of you is providing it. Now, there's some churches out there that are providing it. I'm not trying to act like there's not. There are, but for the most of you, for the most of the churches, I know because I've, I've seen, I've seen some of your worship services, man. You got a bunch of dead eye drones in, in, in your congregation. They ain't doing much of nothing. They're spouting, you know, politeness, but there ain't really nothing else there. It's like either get involved with the cult or, you know, stay on the outside. We got to change that. We got to change that. We got to renew ourselves to a new, uh, a new, uh, a frame of thinking. Because if we don't, we ain't gonna be able to organize ourselves. We will not be able to organize ourselves. All right, so um, I'm done with that. <laughs> I'm not gonna keep preaching to you guys about this. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or uh, concerns, even below. All right, guys. Um, again, this is Vladimir Dees. Let me know. Peace.